Kia ora New Zealand, in your bulletin today, a scrub fire north of Auckland grew six times in size over the course of today. The blaze at Tapora west of Wellsford has been raging since late last night, and some firefighters have been battling the blaze for 12 hours. Two helicopters and a dozen appliances were at the scene battling the fire, most of which has been contained with no threat to nearby houses. And authorities will be able to investigate people suspected of committing welfare fraud without telling them first. And partners of welfare cheats could face a year in jail. Until now, a code of conduct meant beneficiaries had to be told as soon as the Social Development Ministry became suspicious. A range of measures to crack down on welfare fraud have been announced by Associate Social Development Minister Chester Burrows today, who says the system simply isn't working. It generally slowed up investigations by about 25 days and it meant that evidence was destroyed and wasn't obtainable to investigators. Labor, however, is hammering the move. MP Jacinda Ardern says there's a double standard between the way that government's treating beneficiary fraudsters and tax cheats. 0.1% of benefit paid out is fraudulently obtained. And yet we have 1.2 billion in tax discrepancies identified by IRD. To overseas news and a US computer security company has linked China's government to scores of cyber attacks from this building. The headquarters of a Chinese military unit blamed for cyber spying. The Chinese government has denied the accusations saying that cyber attacks are transnational and anonymous. However, the US fears hackers could cause monumental damage to infrastructure like the power grid, flight control systems or even the economy. And the US Congressman Mike Rogers says it's time to get tough. Uh, we are in a cyber war. Uh, Amer most Americans don't know it. Uh, most folks in the world probably don't know it. Uh, and at this point, we're losing. North Korea's third nuclear test drew international criticism, but options for punishing Pyongyang may remain limited. A key factor is how China could respond. China has already voiced its displeasure, but Beijing is yet to show any signs that it's prepared to cut critical support for North Korea, whose relationship with the rest of the world is becoming increasingly unstable. Back home and police are reminding drivers that if they're stopped, it'll nearly always be by someone in uniform. It comes as they seek information on a group of men in Whangarei who have been posing as police officers. Police say they've been using a red Holden Commodore with flashing red and blue lights and pulling motorists over to search their cars for alcohol. The latest incident happened on Sunday when four men in plain clothes pulled over a woman near the information centre. And some good news for farmers as a hint of rain is on the distant horizon. Weather Watch says a frontal system may deliver much needed moisture in about 10 days time. However, the country is looking mostly dry for at least another week. And a pat on the back and vindication for Wellington City Council for its decision to support the Hobbit Premier. The council put $1.1 million into the event and an economic impact report out today revealed it injected $11.7 million into the local economy. The council estimated 60,000 people turned out for the red carpet premiere on November the 28th. And that was your news for Wednesday the 20th of February. Ka kite anō.